on Tropical Storm Ernesto. Let's start first with the visible satellite image so you can see contextually what's sort of happening. And you see here in this visible satellite image, Ernesto is starting to develop. It's starting to get that classic signature look of a developing tropical storm. You can see the sort of the banding features starting to develop. So where is Ernesto now? It's centered right here over the northern uh, Leeward Islands here. Um, and the current uh, wind speed is 50 miles per hour. Pressure's down now to 1,003 millibars. The motion continues to slow down a little bit as it moves uh, uh, through the uh, Eastern Caribbean here, west-northwest at 18 miles per hour. Now, more importantly, what many of you are tuning in for is um, where will it go and what will be the impacts within your uh, interested areas here. So, so I've got on here the cone, so we're showing you the cone, and more importantly, the existing watches and warnings. So the blue area here are tropical storm warnings, and the pink area, and this is new for this update, is the addition of hurricane watches. Now, why did we add hurricane watches to the pre-existing tropical storm warning? Because as Ernesto moves off to the west-northwest here, approaching either the eastern, the extreme eastern tip of uh, Puerto Rico or uh, the U.S. Uh, and British Virgin Islands, it's going to continue to strengthen, possibly strengthening up to hurricane strength. So that's why we have hurricane watches now in effect um, for the Virgin Islands here. So if you're within those areas, you need to go ahead and get prepared for potential for hurricane conditions. Now, again, don't focus on the center line. A lot of people are focusing on the center line. Impact could be anywhere from extreme eastern uh, Puerto Rico over to the Virgin Islands, but even conditions will spread outside of that, and that's why you see these areas under wind watches and warnings even beyond the cone. But the real big threat here is going to be heavy rain. So this graphic sort of changed on you a little bit. It's gonna help you understand what this is. This is how much rain is forecast to occur with the passage of Ernesto. And you can see here this orange ear is an area of six to eight inches and locally up greater than eight inches here over the eastern portions of Puerto Rico. So not gonna be a great uh, afternoon and overnight period to be out and about because this could create flooding conditions where the flood watch is in effect for this area. Now, what happens after that? So Ernesto turns out here over the North Atlantic and continues to accelerate, or it's, I'm sorry, continues to intensify. And what we're gonna have to really watch is you up here in Bermuda. Now, it's too soon to focus on details. This is out here at, at day four and day five, or this weekend. Too soon to focus on details, but there is the potential for a hurricane to be approaching you on Saturday. So you in Bermuda need to be getting, stay tuned, updates at least once per day, if not twice per day. Now, I wanna focus on a lesser known threat, rip currents, and I wanna to explain to you why there's gonna be a rip current risk this weekend for pretty much everybody along the eastern coast of the United States. For many of you, this will be the, the last weekend of summer, and a lot of you are gonna to go to the beach where you may experience good weather, at least at the, at the surface it looks like good weather. This big area here is the wave field, ocean waves that will be generated by a strengthening hurricane at that time. And you can see it's sort of spread all up and down the east coast of the United States. What does that mean? All those waves striking the east coast of the United States will produce a rip current risk. If you don't know what a rip current is, that's where you can be towed out to sea by the waves sort of going back out. Now, what do you do? What action do you take? Always swim near a lifeguard and always check with lifeguards on safety, beach safety. That's it for us. We will be back this afternoon with a five o'clock update. And as always, you can get more information at hurricanes.gov.